Welcome to the Battery Podcast from Siemens Digital Industries. This is the place to find interesting conversations around the battery industry with voices of experts and important players in the business. To that end, today's episode is a little different. This recording out of Hanover Mesa was moderated by Chris Brow with a great panel of guests. Sebastian Wolf, the COO of PowerCo, Dr. Stefan Witt, COO of Jagenberg, Dr. Heiner Heims, a member of Institute Management at RWTH Aachen University, and Michael Thomas, Senior VP of Factory Automation at Siemens. Enjoy! Great to have you, gentlemen. Hi, nice to have you. Hi, Chris. Nice Welcome, everybody. You. Welcome, Good everybody. Wow. All right. So, fully charged, gentlemen. Exactly. I hope so. Sure. When we're talking about batteries. So, great to have you with us. Um, maybe just real briefly, maybe we can start off with you and uh, then go through um, the, the, the panel here. Just tell us briefly what you actually do. All right, so while I'm responsible in PowerCo, I don't know whether everybody knows PowerCo. PowerCo? Uh, Ever heard of it? Who knows yep. PowerCo? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, not enough hands yet. Uh, so we're actually the subsidiary of Volkswagen Group, which is building all the cell factories. Uh, as you've known, we communicated, we're building six factories um, around Europe uh, and the world with around 240 gigawatt hours. And my personal responsibility is to plan, build up, and also run all the cell factories uh, of the Volkswagen Group under PowerCo. All right, thank you very much for that. Dr. Stefan Witt? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so maybe we are not that famous as Volkswagen, but we are machine builders um, with 1,300 employees worldwide, and we are focused on roll-to-roll -roll machinery. And that's what we are doing for more than 160 years now. Look at that. Success uh, with history. How about you? Yeah, I'm Heiner. I'm professor at Aachen University, and my research focus is about the production processes of lithium-ion batteries. And for this, I do a lot of teaching work together with young students and try to make them fit for the battery industry. Thank you very much. And? Yeah, Michael Thomas. I'm in Siemens in charge of the automation of machinery, like the Jagenberg machine you see here. And my heart beats globally for making machines more productive, more speedy, more connected. So, gentlemen, let's jump right into it since we only have a limited time frame here. Maybe we start off with you, Sebastian. What is the current roadmap of PowerCo? Maybe you could tell us what are the biggest challenges in building but also commissioning gigafactories. I know uh, Salz uh, Gitter or Salz Giga, yes, that's as we call Giga, it, one. Yes. Uh, then you opened or started um, uh, Valencia. Just, Valencia, yes. right? What, tell us a bit about what, what the challenges are. Well, uh, I mean, first of all, we're currently setting up three sect factories at the same time, mm -hmm. right now, as of now. I mean, we're in, currently in the process of selecting the next site. Mm -hmm. uh, first site is Salzgitter um, with an SOP in 2025. Second one will be Valencia in Spain. And the third one we just announced uh, a month ago uh, will be in St. Thomas in, in Canada, mm -hmm. which is the first site outside of Europe. Well, what are the challenges? Well, first of all, it's really getting the number of people you need, really getting the qualification, because obviously we don't have an established battery ecosystem such as in Asia right now. Mm -hmm. So really getting the right people at the right pace, the right qualification is really a big challenge. Second one for sure is getting the equipment up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we see some of our uh, competitors here in Europe, they do challenge. Uh, they, they do have challenges here in, in ramping up the factory. Um, so I think we, we need good and uh, reliable partners uh, okay. for setting up also the equipment. Um, yeah, and, and for sure it's, it's in ramping up as fast as we possibly can. Because as you know, all know, uh, the future is electric. And I think also the Volkswagen Group dedicated to really going all electric. Um, so we need the batteries. And uh, yeah, that's basically the major challenges from our side. What would you say um, when we talk about um, uh, batteries from a science and research perspective? Are there any new trends that need to be considered in, in the future of battery industry? Yeah, um, I guess first of all, uh, from a university perspective, it's very important to point out that we have a strong development of the production of our lithium-ion batteries, mm -hmm. and this creates an ecosystem around it. And... Um, so uh, we have companies about uh, recycling, the um, uh, remanufacturing companies, companies for module and pack assembly and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a great ecosystem uh, which is around the battery cell production itself. And um, in each of these topics, there are different trends. Um, for example, 
there is a, a trend of, a, of doing a substitution from the NMC material to, a, to an LFP material. Or if we talk about all solid state batteries, this might be a game changer which will come up in the next years. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And from a, uh, let's say, from a uh, machine builder's perspective, how do you see um, the role of strategic partnerships? As um, Sebastian just mentioned, also one of the biggest challenges, finding the right partners. How, how do you see that? Well, I think you see here on the booth that um, there are quite a lot of, of companies which are involved in such an ecosystem. And from my point of view, that's, that's quite an important part um, to be successful here in Europe. For sure, we are a little bit behind Asia mm -hmm. um, regarding the development. Um, but Looking back to the history, I think, um, for example, to the machine tool industry, there is always a strong, or well, there was always a strong partnership between industry, research, and um, the end user. And I think if, if we consider this, this could be a um, solution for the existing problems to ramp up such factories and um, finding a, a combined standard um, where the ma machine manufacturer are able to modulize the machines um, to make use of the economy of scale. And then in the final end, this will help, up to, help to ramp up such a factory more efficient than it is today. But um, sure. yeah, oh. yeah, Chris, maybe I'm allowed to add. Please. Um, we are monitoring the industry in a very close way. And we found out that we have a very strong market for equipment suppliers, which are able to produce their equipment uh, for battery cell production directly in Europe, mm -hmm. and this could enable a lot of um, a lot of things. And I guess uh, we can be very happy and be very proud that we have this strong market for equipment suppliers directly located in Europe. Good to know, but I guess something not everybody's aware of. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe looking at you, Thomas. Uh, <clears throat> maybe you can tell us how Siemens can um, best possibly support in the area of, of standardization. First of all, from my point of view, for Siemens, we see the battery as a race. Mm -hmm. It's a race in multiple dimensions, starting at the design of the battery itself, where there's a lot of innovation going on, and where we also support in simulating and designing the battery itself. Number two is taking that design into making highly productive machinery, precision machinery equipment, to produce this battery along the value chain, as you see it over here. Number three is then um, scaling up factories where you can produce gigawatts of uh, battery capacity and uh, doing this in a very, very short period of time to win the race. And number four is then over the life cycle of the battery, taking the data from the car where the battery is included connecting it to the design and production uh, data, and then in innovating and analyzing this data to improve the design further. That is how we see, and that is also the way how we want to work together with machine builders, with partners in this ecosystem to speed up the technology. And very, very important is that at the end of the day, with customers like Jagenberg, we want to build machinery where we define the technology today, but we want to continuously update this technology over the years of time. And if I'm informed correctly, yeah. uh, right away, but one of your, machi your machines are, I think, on display here also, right? Uh, yes. In the digital enterprise, just uh, so you know, just in case you haven't heard, I think you mentioned that before, but uh, just saying it again, um, feel free to approach Stefan and his team, obviously, after um, the um, after the talk here. Thank you for the advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. That's, that's what we're here for, too. Well, Go for it. I would like to add something. You asked what are the challenges, right? And what are the challenges in building up competitive cell factories? Um, well, it's, the question is how to build up not only cell factories, but competitive battery cell manufacturing and battery cell companies in Europe. What does uh, competitive because, mean in this? Yeah, exactly. In this that, that's, a, I think, something we need to understand. Um, well, first of all, we don't we have, I think, quite a good know-how of R&D research for battery cells in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. We invested in the last 10, 15, 20 years quite a lot of um, experience and also money in really developing new cell technologies, such as, uh, I don't know, high nickel material, maybe even um, all solid-state battery approaches. 
but really what is lacking, and that's why I think it's really important that we put effort on it right now, is really in-depth development of advanced manufacturing technologies, right? Mm -hmm. Because especially for companies like us, we need to compete at, against established players, right? Mm -hmm. So really what's important for that is that we are cost competitive in terms of CapEx, right? Because we ultimately know we are on a higher cost basis than Asia, not only us, also the friends in, in North America. Um, so we can only compete if we really do something which is innovative. And that's why I think the key challenge is that we don't only establish an, a supply base, but really we have a technology roadmap with production equipment, which en will enable us to be also competitive in terms of CAPEX, but also OPEX, meaning operational costs, uh, which for sure, given the, ri the, the circumstance we are here in Europe with all these energy prices, is quite a challenge for an energy-intensive business such as battery manufacturing. So, yeah. and no, go for it. Maybe one, one thing to add. I think this challenge is that big that you are not able to solve the, that issue on your own. Mm -hmm. So you need partners, and this has to be an open discussion on eye level. And I think um, this is the most important point, that um, we establish an ecosystem and we don't have to think in silos, because in nature an ecosystem is not consisting of silos. Right, right. And that's what this basically also shows. If you take a look at, once again, the screen here, this is the ecosystem. This is what it means. Uh, the, the interplay, once again, working together, uh, the right, having the right partners, and creating uh, the ecosystem that you're talking about. Yeah. Go for it. Um, Chris, I would like to, uh, to confirm... Uh, to my mind, Sebastian is absolutely right. We have to focus on the production processes, and therefore I'm very happy that we get a lot of support from our government, from the ministries, from the national government, from the local government, and they support a lot of research projects where we can focus on the production technologies, where we can, for example, uh, try to make the drying process of the electrodes be better, where we can a try to reduce the energy consumption and something like this. And we get a lot of support and we use this support not only to do research, also to do education. Mm -hmm. Because it's very important that these companies get well-educated young persons which are able to work there and make sure that yeah, uh, the things go in the right way. I guess also one of the, the bigger, bigger challenges in the industry, finding skilled workforce. Mm -hmm. We've heard that uh, many times here today throughout the, many of the different sessions. Um, and when we talk about competitiveness, I guess sustainability also plays a huge role. And if we look at the ecosystem in total, is, 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 is that one of the biggest challenges? Like if, I, if, I, if you talk about your green battery, all right, um, what does it look like? What are the requirements to actually prove sustainability in a production environment? Well, uh, I think, first of all, you need to understand where are your emissions coming from, right? So in a battery assist factory itself doesn't really have a lot of emissions, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't burn something, right? It's, quite a, uh, it's actually quite a silent production, if mm -hmm. you want. Um, but as I said, we're quite an energy-intensive environment, right? Um, so we, we consume quite a lot of energy in terms of electricity. And then for sure, one of the key features to be green, um, and I think we we invest a lot of time and effort in really making sure that the energy we are uh, consuming is renewable, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we are really going for 100% um, sustainable energy supply, um, which for sure is one of the major factors of everybody saying a battery has such a huge CO2 back, right? Everybody's talking about that. But we can act actually actively steer that. Um, for example, in our Spain project, we are actually supplying 30% of the energy we consume in the factory by ourselves. Right? So we basically, okay. next to our facility, we have our own PV park, where we basically generate one-third um, of our energy consumption by ourselves. Well, um, that works in Spain, so I think at least. That works in Spain, but actually there are similar projects in, um, in Germany as well right now. I mean, I always take the fact, in Germany, at least in North Germany, we have 600 sun hours per year. In Spain, we have 1,400. So obviously, PV might not be a good choice mm -hmm. in, in Northern Germany, but therefore we have PV, right? There are other sources... Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think you can, even today, even in Germany, enable a renewable-based uh, battery su electricity supply. You just need to have the right strategy. Um, and also there, you need to have the right know-how and partners. And that's why I think it's really important to find the right people to tell you, well, how do I get ultimately to a really CO2-free or at least CO2-neutral supply of your electricity? Wow. Sounds very ambitious. Um, 
Uh, it becomes reality, actually. Yeah, but also considering the current challenges that are going on around the world, yeah. I mean, from every corner, basically, um, definitely not an easy task, but uh, must be done somehow. How can the supplier, how can Siemens, how, how is Siemens actually contributing to this? Um, looking at um, the um, Siemens Accelerator program, for example, or, yeah. in, or yeah. Industrial Operations X, are these also answers that, that, that help? There are a lot of a lot of technologies to, uh, first of all, optimize the carbon footprint in the production, mm -hmm. also to create the transparency in the production, like uh, sea green we have here on mm -hmm. the fair as well. And uh, I think uh, at the end of the lifetime of the battery, we talk about recycling. That's also something where there's a lot of research and innovation uh, going on. And for sure, sustainability is most probably in terms of battery and uh, consumer, the most important aspect, which is all driving us uh, when we drive an electrical car. Mm. And therefore, I think uh, competition in the race of battery will be definitely uh, sustainability, one of the key factors. And the other topics we discussed that we say, there are other players which have a quite long experience in building batteries, utilizing all the technology not having a big history is a huge, huge opportunity to think the entire process of battery totally different in a strong partnership uh, with competent uh, partners. And I think uh, that makes me very optimistic that also in Europe uh, we will be able to make battery lines like you see here on, on the boots as a model. So and it is learning about from, uh, learning from each other also. Uh, maybe one, one comment or let's say a wish. Mm -hmm. um, we heard many times it's a race, mm -hmm. so it's crucial to be fast and be fast in development. And I fully appreciate what, what the German government and the European Commission is doing for the ecosystem here in, in Europe, mm -hmm. but we are not fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes that long um, if such a project is started. So I think this is something we should keep in mind, that we have to be fast. Well, German bureaucracy, right? Uh, at some point, <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And, it is. I um, think it is a factor, probably. Yeah, it's and uh, that's really a problem for the industry. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's you know, it now decides which role Europe will play. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for everybody to understand: it's not a race whether uh, it's not a race about when; it's a race about whether or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I we need to agree. understand that we now need speed from all the sides. Right? And there's no way to lay back and say, just like in a combustion technology, well, we either way manage it. That's not the truth anymore. Mm. In e-mobility, the race was started somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And now it's on us to catch up. Right? And I think that's very important for everybody to understand. And I think this is a great comment. We really need to get to speed in all aspects of the, of the industry. Yeah. Just le let me underline this fact, because it's very important to know that we have Asian companies which come to Europe to produce lithium-ion battery cells directly in Europe. And not only the cell manufacturers, also equipment suppliers, which are located in the Asian market, now come to Europe mm -hmm. and set up their pro production facilities directly here. And uh, this could be a risk from a European uh, point of, of perspective. And therefore, I totally agree with Sebastian, we have to be fast. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. But taking all Thomas. the challenges and... Uh, heavy load on the shoulders. What I have to say is that uh, machine building and manufacturing was never more exciting than uh, today. And I hope also, you talked about uh, a shortage of qualified people, that more and more people coming here to Hannover are feeling in the same way and that we attract a lot of young talents all over Europe to work with on this challenge. And we are going to make it by combining experienced people from the different domains with young, talented people which have the right skills and all the power to drive the technology. And I guess besides a classical apprenticeship, as you would go, as you do in Germany, I guess uh, the RWTH Aachen is also a great place to start off. Yeah. How do you transfer that knowledge, basically, from research, um, from, from, from an academic level to, to industry? Yeah. Uh, th therefore, you have to know, if we do a research project, there are PhD students, there are master students, bachelor students, they all work in this research project. Mm -hmm. And normally, after 
they graduate, they move into the industry, and for sure they bring their knowledge, mm. uh, the things they learned at uh, the university, directly into the uh, to the industry. And that's uh, how the transfer from the university to the industry works. Looking at the time, gentlemen, this has gone quite more, way quick, more quickly than I expected. Maybe just one closing sentence statement from each of you. What would be your wish, uh, once again, if we meet again here in let's say 2025, what will we be talking about? Well, we are, I, I wish we're in, uh, in mass production with Fully Loaded. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish that we have, and maybe also here, a lot of new talents being recruited. So everybody who's interested in, in PowerCo, now you know. Um, and uh, for sure, we're searching for a lot of talented people. You're very welcome uh, to look at what we offer. PowerCo, now you know. How about Jagenberg? Yeah, as I mentioned before, um, I'm convinced that the German industry or European industry is, is able to supply this. And I would like to wish in 25 that I would say to you, I'm, I was right. All right. How about you? Yeah, uh, I would wish me that we would have a strong European battery industry with a lot of perspectives for my students and a lot of opportunities where these young students could go into. From RWTH Aachen and last but not least from Siemens. I would wish that we have a much bigger circle of competent partners in working together with us in the technology of batteries, developing this ecosystem, and that we have the first factories in, in Europe with the technology we can continuously improve and upgrade for the future. Despite the challenges, I'd say an optimistic outlook when we take a look at the battery production of the future, at least with the help of Siemens and partners like we have here on stage today. Let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much thank you. for joining us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed thank it just you. as much as I did. Yes, thank you. And enjoy the rest pleasure. of the fair. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Battery Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our future episodes. And until then, you might want to check out our previous conversations or go to our website, siemens.com slash battery for more information. This podcast contains the personal views and opinions of the speakers. It is important to note that these opinions are solely those of the speakers and do not reflect the views or positions of Siemens, its management, its employees, or any entities the speakers may be affiliated with. Siemens as a company does not endorse any of these statements made in the podcast. Siemens bears no responsibility for ensuring the content's accuracy or verifying the statements made in this podcast.